Welcome back to another awesome episode of Coach's Kingdom where it's all sports all the time. We are going to be going over your route tree today for wide receivers, tight ends, running backs, you name it, we got it. Um, let's go ahead and jump into it on the right side. Uh, what route would you like to start out with? So on the right side, we're going to start off with the drag route. Typically on the drag route, you're going to have maybe a one or two steps up and you're just dragging across the field. And you're only going to be about two yards farther than the line of scrimmage right here. So he should meet right about here, coming all the way across. So that's pretty much all the drag route is, just two steps and in real quick. Um, these receivers are supposed to be able to get off these corners pretty quickly, and this is one way to do it. Any inside move or outside move is good to get away or get some distance in between you and the corner. On the second one, while Caleb's erasing that one, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you the slant route, which is about a three-step and in but you're slanting in so it's not exactly like the drag where the drag was coming just straight across the line of scrimmage this one's still working your way upfield this also helps in any type of man to man coverage that you have as far as the corner on the receiver there is also a quick slant route which is going to be one step and then you cut in the same exact way yeah and it's still going to be like you're working upfield I'm going to leave that one in, but instead you're going to be leaving about here and coming across. So this is any type of quick pass to make sure these defensive linemen don't get to the quarterback and the wide receiver can get free of the corner quickly. Your main difference here is whether you're working upfield or not. On the drag, you plateau, whereas on the slant, you are working upfield. Yep. Uh, so Caleb's going to go over the curl route. So here we're going to draw, and we're, we're just going to do a basic five-yard curl. Now, your curl can be anywhere from five to ten yards, but basic five-yard curl. Um, basically, you're going to run upfield, stutter, stop, turn back around, and the ball's going to be there, so you better turn around and look. And yeah, so like, that ball's there. So typically what they tell receivers on this route right here, five yards up, two yards back, or seven yards up two yards back. It's all based on two where the first down marker is. If this is a first down play, then it's typically the five and two. Uh, if it's second and three or third and three, it's going to be the five and two. But if it's third and seven, you're going to go seven and two. So you can still get to that first down marker. Um, so like I said, it'll be five steps up and then turn in towards the quarterback. And why that towards the quarterback is so important is because that next route that I'm going to show you is what we call a comeback route or a back route, where it's the same exact thing as the curl on that side, but you're going to be turning towards the sideline on this side. Typically, you'll get this in the fourth quarter or in the first half, late in the first half. Where you've got to reserve time. Where you've got to save time, get out of bounds, catch the ball right here, and this is your sideline right here. So it's the same thing as the curl, but going towards the outside, it's five or seven up two yards back towards the ball but you're going to be coming towards the sideline whereas the curl is towards the ball you're going to be going towards the sideline on the comeback route and it's worth saying uh for any quarterbacks watching this video uh if there are any watching this video you're going to want to throw the ball when he gets right here yep like you're on that curl route over there you're going to want to throw the ball before he turns around so it'll be there the second he turns around you throw it right here because there could be a corner or a linebacker on him that is following his every step, and if they're just quick enough, they jump that, gone. This is also probably, and this is, a, this is something I'll throw in for the comeback. The comeback route is the number one uh, instigator of the 10 toes down challenge. Where you gotta get, yeah. where you gotta get two feet down, feet right, down right on the inside of that. in college, it's one foot. But, uh, but, yeah, you also have that. Now, the big thing here as well, and we'll go ahead and get to a different route. Caleb, go ahead and draw the in route or dig. Uh, but the big thing on these comebacks is if you wait as a quarterback too long to throw this ball, your receiver is going to stop right here. Now, his job is to never stop. So this is also, as a receiver, the quickest way to get benched. Uh, but as a quarterback, if you do not throw the ball when he hits this turning point, if you're not throwing it right there, right there, huh? Interception. 
Yeah, it's an interception. If you wait too long to throw him the ball, you're going to get picked off. Caleb's going to show you the dig route. So right here we're looking. Or, in. or the in route, we're, but we're it, looking, typically it's called the dig. We're looking at what they call the dig slash in route here. Um, basically, you're going to go up 10 to 12 yards, and you're cutting inside, and you're running plateau straight through the middle of the field. All right, and then also we've got the same exact route. Now, notice how this is getting to be the same thing. Uh, the same exact route to the T. The only difference is you're going to be going towards the sideline. What is this one called, Brian? This is called the out route. What? The wow. out route. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you your have, butt out of the game. <laughs> you have the dig or the in route, which is typically towards, you're running towards the middle of the field, where the out route is towards the outside or towards the sideline. Another one of those late in the game or late in the first half plays to conserve time. Caleb's now going to show you the post. Now your post is typically used for long range plays, long mid to long range plays. So you're basically going to take anywhere for depending on how deep you want your post to go anywhere from five to 15 yard post uh you'll run your five to 15 and then you will cut and you'll run diagonal two through the middle of the field why is it called the post caleb because you're going right towards the goal post yep it makes sense doesn't it exactly yeah that's the biggest thing here we're not very smart people <laughs> yeah. now, football football it doesn't take a genius to play you just gotta yeah. listen to the words yep so this route is very similar <laughs> i'm gonna show this again this is what we call the post corner what yeah the same exact route except it's going towards the sideline the uh, corner of what? The end zone. The end zone. So it's the post. You're running towards the goal post. Same amount of yards, 5 to 15. But then you're going to wait a 3 to 5 yard. You're going to try and get the corner to turn his hips towards the inside of the field. If you get that, you've got a touchdown because by the time you get to this point right here, you got the corner running this way, and you're going to be running this way. A lot of times you'll see those quicker, faster receivers run this route. To perfection, Tyreek Hill. That's a big one right here. Larry Once Fitzgerald. Again, quarterbacks, the second he hits that pivot point, you have to throw the ball. Now, I will say what Brett Favre was so good at. To get this corner to open his hips right here, Brett Favre would pump fake. The corner's reading Brett Favre. What does that mean? Now, Brian, so, what is a pump fake? It's kind of hard to show when I'm not on camera. Uh, but a pump fake is pretty much like you're going to fake throw the ball right there. The corners are tight. Keep your eyes on the quarterback or solely look at the receiver. So there's two ways you can play corner. But that quarterback, if he fakes and leans in like he's going to throw the football right there and does a hard pump fake and steps back one time, that corner is going to open his hips and run that way. If he does that, then Brett Favre was really good at throwing to Donald Driver or Greg Jennings going on this post corner route right here. Caleb's now going to show you the seam or the fade route. Nine. This is also called a nine route. Yep. So basically what this means, if you're running, you're fading to the outside, right? We're, we're using this lingo here, okay? You're fading slightly to the outside or running. If you're running a seam, it's typically done by your tight end or your slot receiver, and you're running up the seam of the field. But here, since we're in a uh, wide a wide out wide receiver, uh, we're running a fade. And so as you fade out, basically this is when you see you're in the last three seconds and Aaron Rodgers drops back to throw the <laughs> yeah. ball, this is where Devontae Adams jumps up over yep. three people and just magically scores a touchdown for the tie. Yeah. So this is this is the all-or-nothing play. All right, now we're going to start showing you some tight end routes. This is your tight end right here. It's the T-E. Um, so right here we're going to start with the shallow route, which is just a little – one or two step, a lot like the quick slant. And you're working slightly upfield, just slightly, very slowly, maybe a yard at a time, just upfield. So you're not, you know, you're not trying to work too fast to get to the linebacker. You're trying to come right in front of this middle linebacker, 
who would be sitting right about here. You're trying to work right in front of him so that you can get a couple yards, maybe before a field goal or something like that, so just so you can get a couple yards. Caleb's going to show you uh, the out for the tight end. Well, that's a little difficult for yeah, you. Yeah, that's going to be a little difficult. Right, that's yeah, that's uh, going to be me. Uh, I'm going to show you the out route. So it's pretty much <laughs> the same thing, except one and two, uh, one to two steps, and then you're turning out. This time you're going to be working, as Caleb said, like that plateau for the receiver in the dig or the out route. You're going to be working horizontal straight across the line, but you're going to be running towards the sideline. Um, now, going off of those two routes, what is an option route? We'll get to that at running back because that's where that's used most. Uh, so for the tight end right here, you've got another dig route, just five to six yards, and then you run the in or dig route. The uh, dig route right here for the tight end is behind the linebackers. You want to get behind them and work in between linebacker and safety. Work between the two levels so the quarterback's not throwing it directly to a linebacker. You want to get a little bit more depth than that. Uh, then you also have the curl inside, which is the same amount of steps, five to seven. And then you turn and work two yards back towards the ball. You've also got the same route but the curl outside or the comeback for the tight end. It is the same thing. Only difference here is if you're running against that 4-3 defense we've showed in different videos, you've got a linebacker sitting about right here. He's expecting you to turn into the inside, so he's jumping this route when you're really turning out here. And the only people out here is a safety up here and a corner over here, so they're not really going to be focusing on the tight end all that much. Caleb, will show you this one. Um... This is going to be the seam route for the uh, tight ends. Typically, the same thing as the receiver. So basically, you've got your tight end here. You see it already right here. So what's, what's the tight end going to be doing? Running right down what we call the seam of the field. So basically, what you're going to have here is you've got your hash marks in between here. He's going to be following those hash marks all the way down and right to the end zone. Yep. Um, pretty cut, dry, self-explanatory. Now, yeah. I will say there is one for the tight end that I believe we left out. Um, so for the tight end, there's one more route that kind of falls in between your your out route to your um, slant. We call it a stick. Yep. So you've got the stick route. So basically, you're going to run like you're going to run an out route, but you're going to stick and you're going to stay right here for that ball. Yeah, it's typically like the curl or the curl outside. Uh, this stick route, though, is only going to be about a two-yard turn. Absolutely. So you're going two yards up like you're running the out route, and you're faking that linebacker out. By, he's going to keep going. This tight end is going to stop here. That's working with field right here. Get your tight end in the open space. Typically with the tight end, um, you're going to see the stick route more than you're going to see the um, – more than you're going to see a curl route in in most scenarios, just because it's more available and more realistic. The curl route in the middle of the field with the linebackers and everybody kind of floating around is not as realistic of a play. Yeah, so this one right here is a lot like a post, okay? So tight ends can run this three different ways. First, I'm going to show you the post towards the goal post. Just like the receiver earlier, he goes towards the goal post. They also have what's called a corner, which is this. You're going away from the goalpost towards the corner of the end zone where the pylon is. They also have one more route that the receiver has, but it's going in a different direction. So instead of this being called a post corner, a lot of tight end coaches uh, will call this a Texas route or a corner post where you work outside five yards and then you turn back towards the middle. That's why they call it the Texas right there. It kind of looks like a T. I don't see it all that much, but they call this the Texas route. But you also got to think you've got the tight end doing it, yeah, so it's going to be your your TE. Don't even look stupid, all right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this is what oh, they call the Texas route. That's a good point. Yeah, because uh, your tight end is crossing the middle of the field. Yeah, so the Texas twice. Yeah, what? Dude. Yeah, That's Michael's learning. We're, we're learning things today. We're only doing this kingdom. podcast for Michael. <laughs> yeah. Michael. Michael is learning some new things today on the podcast. And that's, uh, and that's the goal. That's what we want here, especially is, on these videos. There is one I forgot. Um, and it is a shorter route. This route you will see at the running back as well. It's called the flat. <laughs> and for good reason, too. Typically, this is where you'll have this receiver running a slant. 
this tight end's running the flat. You'll have this receiver running the slant. You'll have this running back running the flat. It's just the, pretty much a quick passing play. Get the ball into someone else's hands very, very fast. The the flat is typically um, considered like the the drag of the tight end because yes. you don't really – the tight end does drag across the field from time to time, but it's more realistic to have him run as a uh, a flat than it is across the middle of the field every single play. Okay, and I'm going to try and get Caleb to run a couple routes here as far as running back goes. Caleb, show him the uh, swing route. I'm going to show him the wheel. Okay. Okay. This pretty much is the same route. The only difference is for running back on the swing route on Caleb's side or the weak side right here, um, you're pretty much getting the ball right where Caleb drew that dot. Uh, This is quicker to the running back. Get him out in open space. Typically running backs do good when you get them in open space. That's why they are the running backs. So with the wheel, this is typically considered an option route in most cases, whereas you've got the opportunity for a swing, but if it doesn't work, you just take off up the field. Work up field, yep. Typically you'll have a linebacker covering this running back head on. So if he can run this right here, and this linebacker thinks he's running the swing route like he would be on that side, that linebacker's going to jump right here. That gives free open space up here for that wide receiver. So on uh, Caleb's side, we're going to draw that flat for that running back real quick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw this. All right, so this is the flat for the running back right here on uh, Caleb's side. Typically, you're getting the ball pretty fast or as a check down target. Absolutely. So and now, what down, is a check? What is a check yeah. down? Check down pretty much is you've got other options or what we call hot routes on this field. Okay, you've got other options going down. So typically, quarterback's going to work deepest to closest. He's looking at the hot route, which is right here on your two outside receivers. You're looking at the seam right here to see if the, the, he's open. If he's not and he's covered, there's no way you can get the ball to him. Then you work to this post. If there's no way you can get the ball to him, typically you'll skip tight end and work to your check down pretty quickly because you're, that, running, you're on a the timer The more time here. you spend in the pocket, the more time uh, you give for that defense to get back there. So typically you're looking at two routes and then down. So if you don't so, see it here, don't see it here, this is your check down. I do, I do want to point something out here. Um, typically when they run a passing play um, – when they draw up the actual routes, you can tell that they are leveled. So when you've got your deep route, your mid to deep, your sh- and then your shallows, right? So there's there's numerous parts of the field that, depending on what the defense is going to do, somebody's going to be open because somebody's going to panic. So that's the that's the biggest thing is realizing that it's that's a, that it's all leveled out. Now something else about the flat is you're going to get up to the line of scrimmage and you're not really going to pass the line of scrimmage, but you're going to be right at it. Yep. Um, now what Brian has drawn up here is the angle route, and this used to be the worst route for me as a linebacker because <laughs> yeah. you could never get there quick enough. Because yep. you're they're going to drop and sit at about three yards typically on most angles unless something special. Um, and your linebacker is going to sit at five. So, and he's sitting as typically this is going to be your most check down route. Yeah. Of in everything. a zone defense, Caleb's exactly right. In a man to man, the hardest part about being the linebacker in this man to man defense, if you've got this running back, this route starts out very similar to this route right here. So, if you jump the flat, you've opened up the inside, and one linebacker being gone is a, a, an entire difference between a five-yard gain and a 25-yard gain, or a five-yard gain and a 55-yard gain. So, so I don't know if Brian has this on his sheet or not, but I'm going to draw this up specifically. The uh, option? N- kind of, but not really. Uh, so when we were at – with the – with some uh, some of the other NFL coaches that I was working with at FBU, we called this the smiley route, which is really really interesting. But it, it, we called it that because it made people smile because it was really hard to really hard to cover. So basically, you're going to start out like you're going to run a flat, you're going to run the angle, then you're going to do a loop de loo, and you're going to run back out to the flat. 
So basically, you're getting this this linebacker all tangled up right here in the middle, so that he doesn't know where you're getting the football. And typically, a lot of people use this contact right here to make separation, so that they can get away from it to get this flat. Yep. Then, as the uh, obviously we've been over the seam route, it's very similar for the running back. I'm gonna do it on Caleb's side, so I can do the option over here. Mm -hmm. Very similar to the running back. I mean, very similar to the re receiver or tight end. So the seam routes just get on the outside sh shoulder of the tackle or tight end and run. That's it. Now, this is probably the most important route for a running back. There's three options, so the or four technically. Uh, but if you see a blitz, you stop here and block. That's it. That's the play. That's option one. Option two, if you see the linebacker right here and right here, and he comes down and he comes down. Your option is to stop here in the zone between the two. If, that's option two, it's just a curl pretty much for a running back. If this linebacker is scraping for any reason, this linebacker is staying here, you've got the out. It's the same thing on the other side. If this linebacker is going out of the way and this linebacker is staying where he's at, you're going and following this linebacker very slowly where you can get right behind him, catch the ball, and turn up field. That way you don't have to worry about him no more. That's what we call the option. As you see, there are four different options the running back can do here. Block, curl, in, or dig, and out. So I'm going to draw up something here with the line because this is going to be a little different. Um, it appears like a flat route, but it, we call this a jailbreak screen. Okay, so you're running back. You're going to basically send your line out to block ahead to get all the younger guys or to get all the uh, smaller guys on a bigger body on a bigger body because you know that's how that's going to work. Um, your running back is basically going to catch the ball here in behind the blocks and then run upfield. All right, so there's also two more plays here that we'll go over. Okay. Um, there's two more plays that we're going to go over here. I believe that should be it. Uh, one is just called a regular screen for that receiver. He's going to get the ball right here very quickly. He's turning, dropping two yards, going up. All right, if that doesn't work or you're calling a different play, this is what we call a bubble screen. You're taking two or three steps back, turning your inside shoulder towards the quarterback as you're running outside, catching the ball right about here, and then running forward. You've got typically on a bubble screen a receiver here that's helping you block, a tackle that's told to leave and go, uh, and then this running back right here that's stepping up, replacing the tackle. If he doesn't see anybody, he's going. So you've got three lead blockers, one of them being a tackle, uh, to go help block for this guy. Okay. I've got one more on this side, and you'll see I put the tight end on this side. Um, now this, the math may not add up here for all the, all the players on the field, but this yeah. is just for a, a showing purpose. <laughs> um, basically, there's, if we're talking, there's, there's a lot of – there's a lot of – Every single position we're talking about today can use this uh, can use this play, but this is called the tight end or Y delay screen. Okay, so basically what's going to happen is your tight end is going to start off by blocking, which kind of gives your running back a little bit of time to get up here and fill, and then he is going to basically muster out right here unnoticed so that he is available for a catch and he'll be gone. Okay. I just want to say this very fast because we are on the topic of a route tree and we are in the in the coverage of wide receivers right now. We will speak more about this on future videos. If you're a more advanced player, if you play wide receiver, tight end, or running back, you know what a zone scheme is. You know what's going on in this picture. Sorry, I drew way too many zones. Hey, Caleb, can you erase that one? Yeah, erase the flat. 
Okay. You still follow the same routes. Okay? So, say I'm running an in. My quarterback does not suck. I just want to say this. He threw the ball behind me. He threw the ball where you were open. Pay attention to your zones. He will throw the ball in between zones. He will not throw the ball at the zone unless he sucks. He's a bad quarterback. Same thing goes for any other route. I've got the slant right here. He's going to hit you before you reach that zone. Pay attention to where the ball is. Post route. He's going to hit you in between the zones right here. Pay attention. Once again, seven on seven seasons coming up. And I want to see some better play coming out of these wide receivers because a quarterback is only as good as his wide receivers are. If you can't get open and you're running yourself out of plays like this one and you just keep chugging and chugging along, it's going to be bad. So you've got your wide receivers that your three main rules are going to be be ready and keep your eyes open. Yep. And be, and be, and be patient. Yeah. Patience. Now, the be patient part is big, and we'll go ahead and quickly get through this so we can get to the end of the video, but being patient is big. As the receiver, as Michael drew up the dig route or the in route right here, you don't want to always run full speed. If you're running full speed, you're quickly going to get through this route, and you're going to find yourself out of the play. What you need to do is when you find yourself in the opportunity to catch a ball, slow down a little bit. Don't come to a complete stop. Don't be stupid. Slow down a little bit right here. And this is essentially what a cover two kind of looks like. Right here. And if you've made it right here, slow and turn. And then work with the quarterback. If he's scrambling out this way, all receivers work towards the middle of the field. If he is scrambling this way, turn at this point right here and work backwards towards your quarterback. Your quarterback needs to have an open lane to throw. He will not run out this way and throw it back over he here to this receiver. Specifically, not to do that. Yeah, <laughs> he is never gonna, typically never going to throw the ball across his body over to the other side of the field. That's just asking to get intercepted. So if you work back towards your receiver or uh, back towards your quarterback, then you will get the ball a lot more than you have been before. So that's pretty much what this video is right here, where we worked on the route trees for the running backs, receivers, and tight ends. Uh, if you like the video, make sure to comment, subscribe, and like it. Uh, and then rate us five stars. Uh, Coach's Kingdom, all sports, all the time. Love you.